So some time ago, I did a review on a folding knife out of Bulgaria made by Manley. The Manley Peak Two-Handed Folding Knife. And this had been sent to me for testing and review and I carried it seven, eight, maybe even ten months before I finally did the review. I put it through its paces and I declared it a really nice knife. Well, after that review, Manly of Canada asked if I would be interested in testing another one of their knives out. And when they offered me this knife, I readily agreed because I thought it was something that I would like and maybe you would like. So what I've been testing now for almost six months is the Manly Dragur. If you're interested in hearing more about this knife, keep watching. Okay, so this is a little bit of an awkward situation to talk about this knife at this point. And the reason being is I had the knife maybe two months or so and I received an email from Manly of Canada to tell me that they were no longer going to be the importers for Manly knives in Canada and that when I did the review I would like they would like it if I referred them to their sister organization in the US, the Manly of USA. So I agreed, sure, no problem. Black flies are coming out, great. Uh, however, just recently when I went to look and see about adding that link when I eventually put this video out, I can't find Manly of USA either. So I went back to the Manly uh, site in Bulgaria and the best that I can tell, they're no longer making this model. So what's the point of this review? Well, I've had it for, like I said, almost six months. You can still buy them apparently, there, and I'll give you the links where I have found them out of the US. And I thought if you ever do come across one of these knives and you're interested in knowing whether it's something you should pick up, then maybe this video would be of some value to you. So I have uh, been testing, as I said, now for six months, just about, and it's been my only carry all, well, since uh, late December, I guess, to right through to now. It's been my only main primary carry knife. I usually pair it with something larger like uh, my Travis Scramma or one of my axes and a saw. So this doesn't go out by itself. I usually have something else with me and often a pocket knife for small tasks. But let me give you the basic specifications of this knife and then I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. So of course I will be putting the information that I give you right now in the show notes or the video description below, but I do have a cheat sheet that I want to use for making sure that I've got the right information to give you. So the overall length of this knife is 9 inches or 230 millimeters. It weighs 180 grams or 6.35 ounces. The blade is 110 millimeters or 4.3 inches. It is made of 4 millimeter thick stock and or 530 seconds and it is 30 millimeters at its thickest point. The blade steel is the German variation of D2 which supposedly has a little bit higher I believe chromium content than the American version of D2. This version came in a G10 black G10 handle. So I'll tell you what I like about the knife now what I dislike about the knife and uh, we'll go from there. So when I received the knife, I was especially impressed with a couple of things about the blade specifically. The drop point blade does have pretty much a center line tip on it, but you can see it's very fine in this direction. And what I like about that is the control that I get when carving. So this actually does make a very nice carving knife. I, can, I have carved spoons with it, and I have certainly carved a lot of notches in wood with it as well. It is a full flat grind, which Actually, I quite like. I like full flat grind more than I do the traditional Scandinavian grind. Uh, I think that this is a better overall grind for most tasks. It's much more slicey, if you will. It'll go deeper into wood. It does have a secondary bevel on it that is not a zero grind. It does have a secondary bevel, and the information from Manly Knives is that it is 15 degrees. The, it has jimping right here right for the thumb and there's some little jimping right in the choil right in here as well. Um, the jimping is neither sharp nor aggressive but at the same time I don't slip on it. The blade did come or the back of the spine did come with 90 degrees although the first time I tested it on a ferrocerium rod it didn't produce the greatest sparks very quickly with a ceramic rod running it back and forth 90 degrees to the edge of the spine I was able to bring that to quite sharp and I haven't had to touch it up again since so now it'll throw sparks. 
There's two sides to that story, of course. Everybody wants to have a knife with a 90 degree spine for throwing sparks from a ferrocerium rod, or presumably for scraping bark. The downside of that is carving. When you're using this knife and you're pushing on it with your thumb, either the thumb, the primary thumb, or your offhand thumb in a scissor-like motion, that sharp 90 degree edge can wear on you quickly. So gloves are preferred for that. I don't like wearing gloves when I carve. I don't get the true feel for the wood. But uh, yeah, it's nice to have for starting fires. It's not nice when you're carving wood with it. Now, it does also have a pommel that extends past the end of the handle. It's sharp. It's not sharp enough that you can scrape much with it. The intent I'm assuming is, is that this can be used for striking. So I guess you could strike nuts with it to open them up. Here in Nova Scotia we might stri strike shellfish from around the coast. And I guess you could be used for pounding into wood. And I tried that just to see, not to see how deep I could get it, but to pound it in so I could do some feathering where the knife is in the wood and you pull the stick back and forth on the edge of the blade. And that works out quite well. I have not had an, an issue with other uh, knives that don't have that exposed pommel, but uh, having it is not an issue and it actually may be a benefit. The, blade, or the handles are held on with Allen screws, double-sided Allen screws, so they meet in the middle. I have taken the handles off. It has a little barrel bolt that goes right through the handle to allow them to be tightened and loosened off. Uh, the, and there's a reason, I'll explain in a minute, why I wanted to take the handle off and do that. Uh, Manly provides you with a little Allen wrench to go with it so that you can take these off for maintenance. Always a good idea once in a while, especially if you got it wet, to take it off and let it dry so you don't get any rust underneath the GT hand, G10 handles. If you're interested and you are able to find these online, there are other variations in steel. I believe there's a, a 154CM and an S30V, um, if I'm not mistaken, and there are a number of wood options as well for the handles. So, what do I like about it again is the blade. The blade to me is just about perfect. The handle length is, a, is, well, is great. Uh, having a double XL hand, I have lots of real estate for grabbing onto this, but that's where the compliments to the handle end. Um, you're going to notice that this is thin, very thin, in fact. And uh, while comfortable holding it, it's not comfortable after extended carving. So feather sticking with this does get a little cramped. My hand gets cramped because I'm trying so hard to hold on to the knife that uh, I get cramped over time. Again, not uncomfortable. It's not causing hot spots, just a cramping. I would much prefer to see a thicker handle. In fact, that's the reason why I mentioned I took the handle off is because when, after this interview, I'm going to see what I can do to widen it out a little bit with some liner materials. I wanted to know how much space I had to, to do that with those two little barrel bolts. Not a lot, by the way. I may have to look for replacements. The other thing I'm not so fancy, crazy about in the handle is the depth right here in this way, in this direction right here. Uh, what you want in a knife handle is something that is wider this way than it is this way. You want to have that kind of a profile so that you don't have something round in your hand. So when you turn into a cut and carving, you've got a better hold on it. If it's round, like a broomstick, completely round, the knife will be harder to hold onto and want to rotate in your hand. So having something wider in this direction than it is in this direction is easier to use. My concern is when I widen this out in this direction, that it's going to end up wider, so I won't be able to add very much, than it is deep. So I won't, want, I won't be able to go past that depth and still have something that I can hold on to. Other than that, I've used this, as I said, for carving spoons, as well as all the traditional bushcraft carving, and it's worked out just fine. I've done a lot of batoning with these knives, and I know people will say that's not a good idea to do with a knife. I've not had an issue with it, and I had to be sure that I could say I batoned with this knife and it didn't damage it. So yes, I did a lot of batoning, even though it is a full flat grind. The tip has not suffered any damage. I didn't dig into wood to pry on it to see if I could break the tip, but in normal use in batoning, it has not suffered any damage whatsoever. Now, I do want to address something of interest. D2 has a reputation of being a steel that, one, chips easily if it's, if it's made too hard. And a lot of that has to do with the heat treat and the grind of the angle. I've not had any chipping, any rolling, or anything at all. In fact, in the six months that I had this knife, I only had to sharpen it once. And I'll explain. I, don't, I didn't want to 
have to do it then, but I'll explain why I ended up sharpening. All I ever did with this is take it to the strop, and that's it. Just strop it. Now I was able to maintain a hair popping edge. It's hair popping right now. Very, very sharp. So why did I sharpen it? I dropped it. Uh, it's just uh, one of those careless mistakes on my part. I was, uh, I had the, the knife in my hand and uh, it fell. So careless on my part. I should have either put it back in its sheath or laid it down, but I dropped it on stone. And when I picked it up, I had a gouge out of the belly of the knife right here. And uh, yeah, I was disappointed. It wasn't going to be a matter of sharpening that out with the stones. I had to flatten the blade to bring it down to the, to the depth of it. It was kind of rolled. It wasn't chipped out. It rolled out, if you, if you understand what I mean, but not uh, deep enough that I had to flatten the blade and then re reset the profile altogether. Uh, I used my Lansky sharpening system and it took me about two hours. So what I can say about this steel is while it's very tough, it's also quite hard to sharpen. My point being is, well one, be careful and don't do make foolish mistakes like I did with this knife. And two, it's easier to keep a knife sharp than it is to sharpen a dull knife. So maintenance on this edge will go a long way and you won't have to sharpen it near as often. Uh, I do want to address the sheath. Now I laid it down. So this is the sheath that came with the knife. It is a Kydex sheath and it has a belt loop on the back and fixed with two small set screws. Uh, I don't like this <laughs> at all. I think I may have mentioned that in another video. It's not that it doesn't work. I mean, it holds the knife fairly well. Maybe not that well. So yeah. Okay, there's another reason for not liking the knife. I think this might be starting to loosen up over use. I've not had that happen before where it actually fell out of the sheath. So <laughs> I'll be replacing this sheath. The sheath to me was just a mistake. It had so many things going wrong for it. To start with, look at the belt ride, how high that is. Now maybe you like something that rides that high on your belt, but I don't. I can't. In fact, when I wear a backpack, my belt strap would just come right over the whole handle and cover it. I like something that is at least belt level or lower on a dangler. That's my preference. So I also wanted to see if I could remove this clip and put, or the, the belt loop and put it on sideways and carrying it in sides, uh, side fashion. It does not work like that. They, for whatever reason, it's a non-standard spacing in the holes on the back. I have a tech lock and I tried putting that on and I cannot put a tech lock on this either. It's non-standard spacing in the holes. So what do I think about the sheath? replace it. Get rid of it. Don't use it. It's just not something I, I, well, here's what I was doing with it. Because I couldn't carry it, I'd been carrying it around my neck. Uh, not comfortable with doing that. Normally, I, I don't, especially upside down. I don't mind carrying an, uh, a, a knife in neck carry if it's in a vertical style and I can tuck it inside of my jacket or inside of my shirt where it won't get caught on branches when I'm bushwhacking and won't dangle in front of my face when I'm bending over doing chores. But that's the only way I've been able to use this knife, other than putting it in my pocket, I guess. And, uh, well, this will be the last time I carry it like this. So it's not, a, it's not a great way to carry this knife at all. As you can see now, it fell right out of the, the sheath. So, uh, yeah, this will be definitely the last time I carry the knife like this. Okay, there's not much more I can say about this knife. It functions well. By the way, the flat grind, if you're wondering, uh, I know so many people prefer the Scandinavian grind. Uh, my preferences are, I have Scandinavian grind nines. I like them. They carve well, and that's where it ends. They're not as functional for so many other things like food prep and, and things like that. I like a very slicey knife, and a full flat grind provides me a nice slicey knife. So full V or full flat grind, either way you want to call it, that's my preference. There is a bit more skill in using this for feather sticking. It's not as intuitive as it is with a scanty ground knife, but it doesn't take much to learn it and you can get some fine curls with a full flat ground knife. Okay, one more thing before I close this video. I just wanted to share with you my Manly Peak two-handed knife again because I want to show you what I've done to it since I uh, bought the knife and I dug into my pile of knives and I found one of my knives that had an aftermarket thumb stud that can be attached to a blade like this using a little Allen key. And it's made all the difference in how this knife functions for one hand opening. The only issue is I can't remember where I got it. 
So let me put that question out to you. If anyone knows where you can purchase these aftermarket thumb studs, please put it in the comments section below so that I can share it with all my viewers because for whether it's this knife or any other one hand or two handed knife, this thumb stud makes it all the difference in operation. Okay, that's all I have to offer you on the Manly Knife. Again, I'll put the links in the information in the uh, video description or show notes below all about the knife and where at least I can find it. And uh, if you have any questions about the knife, please put those in the comments below. But until we see each other again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.